management of exacerbations of asthma, recent update. Dr. Jul Mohsin Udin, DTCD, FCPS, Pulmonology. What do you mean by exacerbation? Exacerbations represent an acute or subacute worsening in symptoms and lung function from the patient's usual status, sometimes it may be the initial presentation of asthma. It is defined as loss of control of any class or variant of asthma, which may cause mild to life-threatening attack. Risk factors for acute exacerbation Non-compliance to preventive drugs Infection, most commonly viral alerty HO exposure to allergens Use of more than two canisters of inhaled short-acting sharp S2 agonist per month Emotional instability Current use of systemic corticosteroids or recent withdrawal from this drug Factors that increase the risk of asthma-related death A history of near-fatal asthma requiring intubation and mechanical ventilation Hospitalization or emergency care visit for asthma in the past year Currently using or having or recently stopped using oral corticosteroids Not currently using inhaled corticosteroid Overuse of Sabas, especially use of more than one canister of Salbutamol within one month, etc. Management of acute exacerbation of asthma at various levels Self-management of exacerbations with a written asthma action plan Management of asthma exacerbations in primary care Management of asthma exacerbation in the emergency department Management after hospitalization which also include ICU management Self-management of exacerbations with a written asthma action plan A. For all patient, mild to severe exacerbation 1. Increase usual reliever An increase frequency of short-acting sharp S2 agonist, SABA, for MDIAD spacer Rule of 5 B. Low dose ICS slash formaterol Increase frequency of reliever use Maximum formateral total 72 mcg slash day To increase usual controller A. For maintenance and reliever ICS slash formaterol Continue maintenance ICS slash formaterol and increase reliever ICS slash formaterol as needed B. For maintenance ICS at least double ICS, consider increasing ICS to high dose, maximum 2000 mcg slash day. C. For maintenance ICS slash sharmaterol, step up to higher dose formulation of ICS slash sarmaterol, or consider adding a separate ICS inhaler. B. Severe exacerbation. Add aural corticosteroid, OCS, and contact doctor. OCS. Prednison or prednis alone is given in following condition. 1. Deteriorate rapidly or before F160% personal best or predicted. 2. Patient not responding to treatment over 48 hours. 3. Have a history of sudden severe exacerbations. Dose, adult, prednis alone 1 mg slash kg slash day, maximum 50 mg, usually for 5-7 days. Children, 1 to 2 mg slash kg slash day, maximum 40 mg, usually 3-5 days. Rule of 5. 1. Ensure the patient is sitting comfortably upright, be calm and reassuring. 2. Give 5 puffs of relief or inhaler. If spacer is available, shake inhaler and insert mouthpiece into spacer. Place the spacer mouthpiece into patient's mouth. Give one puff. Ask the person to breath in and out normally for about five breaths. Repeat in quick succession until five puffs have been given. Use of spacer. If spacer is not available, shake inhaler and place mouthpiece in patient's mouth. Give one puff as the patient inhale slowly and steadily. Ask the patients to hold the breath for five seconds. Then ask the patients to take five normal breathe. Repeat until five puffs have been given. Three, wait for five minutes. Four, if there is no improvement, give another five puffs. 
5. Repeat the process for 5 times if little or no improvement transfer the patient to hospital, keep giving puffs every 5 minutes till hospital care begins. Management of asthma exacerbation in primary care. Primary care can be given in doctor's chamber or primary health care center like Aposila Health Complex. A brief history and relevant physical examination should be done with prompt initiation of therapy, and findings should be documented in the notes. If the patient shows signs of severe or life-threatening exacerbation, treatment with Saba, controlled oxygen and systemic corticosteroids should be initiated while arranging for the patient's urgent transfer to an acute care facility. Flowchart of management of asthma exacerbation in primary care. Assess the patient is it asthma? Risk factors for asthma-related death. Severity of exacerbation mild, moderate talks and phrases, prefers sitting to lying, not agitated, RR, ah, comma, pulse 100, 120 BPM, O2 saturation 90, 95%, per 50% predicted or best. Severe, talks in wards, sits hunched forwards, agitated, RR, ah, 30 per minute, accessory muscles in use, pulse 120 BPM. O2 saturation 90%, BEF less than or equal to 50%. Life, threatening, drowsy, confused, silent chest. Transfer to acute care facility. While waiting, give Saba, O2, systemic corticosteroid. Start treatment, Saba 410 puffs by MDI plus spacer. Repeat every 20 minutes for one hour. Prednis alone. Controlled oxygen, target saturation 93 to 95 percent. Continue treatment with Sabo as needed arses response at one hour or earlier. Arses for discharge. Controlled oxygen therapy, if available, oxygen therapy should be titrated against pulse oximetry, if available, to maintain oxygen saturation at 93 to 95 percent, 94 to 98 percent for children 6 to 11 years. Controlled or titrated oxygen therapy gives better clinical outcomes than high flow 100 percent oxygen therapy. Management of asthma exacerbations in the emergency department. Severe exacerbation of asthma are the life-threatening medical emergencies, which are most safely managed in an acute care setting for example emergency department. Besides history taking and physical examination, objective assessments are also needed as the physical examination alone may not indicate the severity of the exacerbation. 1. Measurement of lung function. This is strongly recommended if possible, and without unduly delaying treatment. BEF or FEF1 should be recorded before treatment is initiated. Lung function should be monitored at an hour and at intervals until a clear response to treatment has occurred or a plateau is reached. 2. Oxygen saturation should be done preferably by pulse oximetry. This is especially useful in children if they are unable to perform PEF. Saturation levels 92% is a predictor of the need for hospitalization. Saturation levels 90% in children or adults signal the need for aggressive therapy. Saturation should be assessed before oxygen is commenced, or 5 minutes after oxygen is removed. 3. Arterial blood gas measurements should be considered for patients with a BEF or FEF 150% predicted or for those who do not respond to initial treatment or are deteriorating. 4. Chest X-ray is not routinely recommended. It should be considered if a complicating or alternative cardiopulmonary process is suspected especially in older patients, or for patients who are not responding to treatment where a pneumothorax may be difficult to diagnose clinically. Positive CXR findings in children may be found if there is fever, no family history of asthma and presence of localized findings in chest examination or in case of suspected foreign body inhalation. Flowchart of management of asthma exacerbations in acute care facility, e.g., emergency department. Initial assessment are any of the following present. A. Airway B. Breathing C. Circulation drowsiness, confusion, silent chest. 
further management by clinical status according to worst feature. Consult IQ, start Saba and O2 and prepare patient for intubation. Mild or moderate. Short-acting sharp S2 agonists, consider apotropium bromide, controlled O2 to maintain saturation 93, 95%, child 94, 98%, oral corticosteroids. Severe. Saba plus apropium bromide, controlled O2, oral or four corticosteroids. Consider four magnesium. Consider high dose ICS. If continuing deterioration, treat as severe and reasses for a coup. Assess clinical progress frequently measure lung function in all patients one hour after initial treatment. Fefopef 68% and symptoms improved, moderate consider for discharge. Fef1 or Pef 60%, severe, continue treatment and reassess frequently. Drugs used in acute care settings. 1. Oxygen, desirable oxygen saturation is 93 to 95 percent, 94 to 98 percent for children 6 to 11 years, oxygen should be administered by nasal cannula or mask. In severe exacerbations, kindled low flow oxygen therapy using pulse oximetry is preferable. Saturation at 93 to 95 percent is associated with better physiological outcomes than with high flow 100 percent oxygen therapy. 2. Inhaled Saba. Inhaled Saba therapy should be administered frequently. The most cost effective and efficient delivery is by MDI with spacer. A reasonable approach to inhaled Saba in exacerbation would be initially use continuous therapy followed by intermittent on-demand therapy for hospitalized patients. 3. Epinephrine, for anaphylaxis, intramuscular epinephrine, adrenaline, is indicated in addition to standard therapy for acute exacerbation associated with anaphylaxis and angioedema. It is not routinely indicated for other asthma exacerbations. 4. Systemic corticosteroids. Systemic corticosteroids speed resolution of exacerbation and prevent relapse, and should be utilized in all but the mildest exacerbations in adults, adolescents and children 6 to 11 years where possible. Systemic corticosteroids should be administered to patient within one hour of presentation. Use of systemic corticosteroids is particularly important in the emergency department if Initial Saba treatment fails to achieve lasting improvement in symptoms. The exacerbation developed while there. Patient was taking OCS. The patient has a history of previous exacerbation requiring OCS. Oral corticosteroids is as effective as intravenous. Oral route is preferred because it is quicker, less invasive and less expensive. For children a liquid formulation is preferred to tables. OCS require at least 4 hours to produce a clinical improvement. Intravenous corticosteroids can be administered when patients are too dyspneic to swallow, if the patient is vomiting, or when patients require non-invasive ventilation or intubation. Dosage Daily doses of OCS equivalent to 50 mg prednis alone as a single morning dose, or 200 mg hydrocortisone in divided doses, are adequate for most patients. For children, an OCS dose of 1 to 2 mg slash kg up to a maximum of 40 mg slash day is adequate. 5 and 7 day courses in adults have been found to be as effective as 10 and 14 day courses respectively, and a 3 5 day course in children is usually considered sufficient. Oral dexamethasone for 2 days can also be used. 6. Inhaled corticosteroids. Within the emergency department, high dose ICS given within the first hour after presentation reduces the need for hospitalization in patients not receiving systemic corticosteroids. ICS containing medications significantly reduce the risk of asthma related death or hospitalization. 7. 
hypertropium bromide, in moderate to severe exacerbation, treatment in the emergency department with both Saba and hypertropium, a short-acting anticholinergic, is associated with fewer hospitalizations and greater improvement in PEF and FEVI compared with Saba alone. 8. Aminophiline and Theophylline Intravenous aminophiline and theophylline should not be used in the management of asthma exacerbation, in view of their poor efficacy and safety profile, and the greater effectiveness and relative safety of Saba. The use of intravenous aminophiline is associated with severe and potentially fatal side effects, particularly in patients already treated with sustained, release theophylline. 9. Magnesium Intravenous magnesium sulfate is not recommended for routine use in asthma exacerbations. However, when administered as a single 2 grams infusion over 20 minutes, it reduces hospital admission in some patients, including adults with FEF 125 30% predicted at presentation, adults and children who fail to respond to initial treatment and have persistent hypoxemia, and children whose FEF 1 fails to reach 60% predicted after one hour of care. Nebulized salbutamol is most often administered in normal saline. However, it can also be administered in isotonic magnesium sulfate. 10. Leukotriene Receptor Antagonists There is limited evidence to support a role for LTRAs in acute asthma. Small studies have demonstrated improvement in lung function. 11. ICS Webling Combinations The role of these medications in the emergency department or hospital is unclear. One study showed that high dose ptosnide, formatorol in patients in the emergency department, all of whom received prednisolone, had similar efficacy and safety profile to Saba. 12. Antibiotics Evidence does not support a role of antibiotics in asthma exacerbations unless there is strong evidence of lung infection, e.g. fever raw purulent sputum or radiological evidence of pneumonia or features of sinusitis. Aggressive treatment with corticosteroids should be implemented before antibiotics are considered. 13. Sedatives should be strictly avoided during exacerbations of asthma because of the respiratory depressant effect of anxiolytic and hypnotic drugs. An association between the use of these drugs and avoidable asthma deaths has been reported. Management after hospitalization also include ICU management. Clinical status including the ability to lie flat, and lung function one hour after commencement of treatment are more reliable predictors of the need for hospitalization than the patient's status on arrival. Following criteria are important for hospitalization of patient. 1. If pretreatment FIF1 or BEF is 25% predicted or personal best, or post-treatment FIF1 or BEF is 40% predicted or personal best, hospitalization is recommended. 2. Use more than 8 sharp S2 agonist puffs in the previous 24 hours. 3. Severity of the exacerbation, e.g. need for resuscitation or rapid medical intervention on arrival, respiratory rate 22 breaths per minute, oxygen saturation 95%, final BEF 50% predicted. 4. Past history of severe exacerbations e.g. intubations, asthma admissions. 5. Previous unscheduled office and emergency department visits requiring use of OCS. When will you transfer the patient to a coup? Severe dyspnea that does not respond to initial treatment. Use of accessory muscle and sign of fatigue. Altered mental consciousness. SPO2 90% despite adequate supplementary O2. A raising PCO2. ABG pH 7.25. When you can take support of non invasive positive pressure ventilation. Respiratory distress with use of accessory muscles of respiration. Abdominal paradox. Respiratory rate 30 per minute. ABG shows pH 7.25 to 7.35 or PACO 2 to 55 to 92 or PAO 2 slash FIO 2 200. PACO 250 to 54, but SPO 2 88% despite O2 supplement. Patient refuse intubation. 
indications of intubations and invasive mechanical ventilation. Severe dyspnea with use of accessory muscle of respiration and paradoxical abdominal movement. Respiratory rate 35 per minute. Life-threatening hypoxemia, POW 240 mhg. Severe acidosis, pH 7.25 and hypercapnia PACO 260 of Hg. Respiratory arrest. Somnolence and impaired mental status. Hypertension and shock. NIP failure. Asses for discharge if following targets are achieved. 1. Symptoms improved, not needing SABA. 2. Beth improving, and 60 to 80% of personal best or predicted. 3. Oxygen saturation 94% in room air. 4. Resources at home adequate. Management plan at discharge. Reliever, continue as needed. Controller, start or step up. Check inhaler technique, adherence. Preedness alone, continue, usually for 5-7 days, 3-5 days for children. Follow up, within 2-7 days. Follow up. Reliever, reduce to as needed. Controller, continue higher dose for short term, 1-2 weeks, or long term, 3 months, depending on background to exacerbation. Risk factors, check and correct modifiable risk factors that may have contributed to exacerbation, including inhaler technique and adherence. Take home message. Severe acute asthma, sometimes may be the initial presentation of asthma. Every patient should have written asthma action plan for self-management of exacerbations. Controlled or titrated oxygen therapy gives better clinical outcomes than high flow 100% oxygen therapy. Measurement of lung function is strongly recommended, if possible, and without unduly delaying treatment. Take home message. Oral corticosteroids is as effective as intravenous. Five and seven day courses in adults have been found to be as effective as 10 and 14 day courses respectively clinical status, including the ability to lie flat, and lung function one hour after commencement of treatment are more reliable predictors of the need for hospitalization than the patient's status on arrival. Thank you all.